And federal execution policy also seeing some significant last minute changes here. The Justice Department creating uh, new regulations allowing for the use of more methods for federal executions, including firing squad and electrocution. That's right, people. Trump is expanding the ways the federal government can execute someone. You know, there's old ones coming back, like the firing squad and the electric chair, and the new ones, like getting in the ring with Jake Paul. And look, I don't know about you guys, but honestly, I would prefer being executed by firing squad than a lethal injection. I mean, first of all, there's always the chance that I'll get saved by Zorro, and second, a firing squad requires a lot more people, so I'm creating jobs for the economy. Also, if you are gonna have executions, a firing squad is just a lot more badass. You know, you get to wear a blindfold, you get that cigarette, come on guys, do your worst. Whereas with lethal injection, it's like, oh man, I gotta go to the doctor and then die? And by the way, one thing I've never understood about firing squads is, why do you need a whole squad? Like, how bad is their aim that they need eight people to shoot at you? This is America. One person can kill 30 people in a minute with a gun. You don't need eight people to kill one person. Now, what's really interesting is that Donald Trump isn't the only one who's trying to go big before he goes home. Many of his international allies know that when Joe Biden steps into the White House, they won't have as much leeway to do whatever they want, which is probably why Israel decided that now is as good a time as any to take their shots. This morning, mystery surrounding the assassination of Iran's top nuclear scientist. Oh. An Iranian official now saying Israel used electronic devices to kill Mohsen Fakhrizadeh remotely. Reportedly been traveling with his wife in this bulletproof car you see when he heard gunfire and got out of the car to check out what happened. And that's when reports say that a machine gun apparently operated by remote control attached to a Nissan pickup truck gunned him down. That Nissan apparently then exploding in what Iranian media claims was a self-destruct function. God damn! Remote control machine guns? Self-destruct buttons? We thought the new James Bond movie was delayed. It turns out that shit was playing out in real life. It almost feels like Israel is getting its assassination ideas from video games. Soon Iran scientists are gonna start getting killed by Kirby. They even had that Nissan self-destruct, which by the way is a terrible ad for Nissan. We need a car to use once, then blow up. So we'll take the Nissan. Although, if I'm perfectly honest, I don't know if I believe every part of the story right now. Cause like, I struggle to understand the concept of a nuclear scientist getting out of a bulletproof car to check out where the bullets were coming from. Why would he do that? He's a nuclear scientist. Not like some guy who eats paint for a living. Also, I think there's a broader takeaway for us to learn here, which is that you only wanna be your country's second most important nuclear scientist. So remember kids, study hard, but not too hard. Now, it turns out that this assassination may have been illegal, but it was also a very slick move diplomatically because Israel knows that Joe Biden wants to bring Iran back into the world, but killing their top scientist is gonna make that a lot harder because now Iran is gonna want revenge, right? And then Joe Biden's trying to make peace. He's gonna come on like, oh, come on guys, come on. Let's all just get along. Come on, Iran, what do you say? We deserve revenge, Joe Biden. Wouldn't you want revenge for whoever did that to your ankle? No, man, this was done by a dog. Yes, the man who did this to you is a dog. Yeah, he's my best friend. You are a very strange man. Now, even though the United Nations is begging every country to just pump the brakes, I don't think this kind of thing is gonna stop with Israel. I think in the next two months, you're gonna see all of Trump's friends trying to cram in as much as they can before he leaves office. Vladimir Putin might just invade all of Ukraine. Saudi Arabia could execute everyone else at the Washington Post. And Kim Jong-un, whew, he's gonna be the worst. He's gonna take advantage of everyone being distracted and finally get those bangs that he's always wanted.